Prepare yourself for a deeply relaxing journey to the island of wisdom, wellness, and wonder. Whatever your hopes and dreams may be, you will emerge from this guided meditation much more comfortable and much more confident than before. It will all seem effortless to you. Now prepare yourself, arrange your clothes, make sure your other devices are turned off so that we will have no disturbances during this guided meditation. I'd like to ask you to sit up straight in your chair with both of your feet planted firmly on the floor. Your hands should be to the side of your body with the palms facing upwards. I also suggest that throughout this meditation you keep your eyes open so that we can maintain this connection. I also have some beautiful images of Greece for you that you might like to enjoy. Otherwise, you can go ahead and close your eyes if you feel more comfortable. At the end of this video, please like, comment, share it with your friends, and make sure you're subscribed to this channel. Also, I really appreciate your support through Patreon.com. Now let's begin by taking a deep breath together, inhaling through the nose, holding that breath and spreading it throughout your whole body from the top of your head to the tips of your toes. And only when you've spread the oxygen in your body can you then exhale through the mouth. Again, inhale deeply, 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 relaxing your facial muscles, relaxing your shoulders spreading the oxygen to all the cells of your body and exhaling through the mouth with double the time so that really you empty out any stress. Once again, a deep, deep inhalation, relaxing your jaw in particular by dropping your mouth open, spreading the oxygen throughout your whole body, relaxing your shoulders. And again, exhaling double the time so that you feel deeply, deeply relaxed. Now drop your head forward so that you feel a nice stretch in the back of your head and the back of your neck. And keep your eyes open and simply observe your abdomen, your stomach area, as it's rising and falling with every breath you take. Observe how it inflates like a balloon every time you're inhaling and how it deflates every time you exhale. Allow yourself to breathe naturally, relaxing and being comfortable with every breath you take. Now I want you to raise your head a bit so that you're looking at the screen again. Our eyes are connecting. You and I are connecting. Even though we may be in separate geographical locations, 
on a higher level, we are connecting. Our souls are connecting. Our being is connecting. With peace and harmony, I will guide you in this relaxing guided meditation. Let's just take a few moments to synchronize our breathing. That's right. Inhaling and exhaling. Your shoulders are relaxing. Your whole right arm is relaxing. Your whole left arm is relaxing. The abdomen area is relaxing. Your genital area is relaxing. Your whole left leg is relaxing. Your whole right leg is relaxing. You feel yourself sinking deeper and deeper in the chair as you feel your whole body relaxing. Now I want you to imagine you are standing on a sandy beach in beautiful Greece. Looking out towards the sea, you notice the shimmering golden reflection of the sun. You pause a moment to inhale the salty sea breeze. You are drawn to walk into the clear water, so you undress. You approach the foamy edge of the sea. The water is warm and welcoming. First your ankles are wet, then your knees, then your waist. As you progress deeper into the water, you dip your head in. You are now swimming around a bit, feeling how relaxing it is simply to be floating and flowing. You feel cleansed and refreshed. Now you see the island in the near distance. It was always there, but you hadn't noticed it. It's a lush green island. And you're curious, so you begin to swim towards it. The waters beneath are crystal clear. You feel safe and comfortable as you swim towards the beautiful island. Finally, you have reached the shore. On the beach, there is a white linen toga with your name embroidered in gold. You understand that someone has left it for you, so you put it on. Once you are dressed, a beautiful woman appears. She welcomes you and says, Welcome to Paradise Island, lover of wisdom, and makes a sign for you to follow her inland through the trees. First you pass the palm trees. Then the olive trees. Then the cypress trees and the orange trees. Now you pass 
the majestic waterfalls. The woman takes you up to the top of the hill to an ancient Grecian temple. You are walking up the steps now to the main door. There is a guardian next to the door and asks you to say the secret password. For a moment you hesitate and then someone whispers it in your ear three times. Elin. Elin, Elin. You repeat this word to the guard, and the guard opens the door now saying, Welcome, lover of wisdom. You have arrived to the place of transformation. Now is the time to reflect on today's philosophy lesson. Join us by the fire. Today we're going to be reflecting on Greek philosophy. Greek philosophy is all about being an example of excellence of virtue, of courage, honor, and beauty. Yes, you may say that Greek philosophy is idealist in some way, a vision of who we could become when we allow ourselves to reveal our inner strengths. Be an example out there 
Don't be satisfied with more learning, but practice, practice, practice. Because if time passes, as Epictetus says, we forget what we've learned and end up doing the opposite and hold opinions the opposite of what we should or what we decided was right once upon a time. We need to be aligned with our values, in other words, not to stray off our path of virtue, excellence, beauty, wisdom, and harmony. Sorry to bring it to you, but you're not Superman or Wonder Woman. You can't just listen to stoic principles once and expect to rely on them when life happens. You must practice like a professional athlete and show up on the pitch every day. Show up earlier and leave later than everyone else. From nothing comes nothing. Remember that philosophy is all about how to live one's life. As I've told you earlier, Epictetus compares philosophy to artisans. Just as a carpenter uses wood and the sculptor uses bronze, we use our own lives as the raw material in the art of living. Every event in our lives represents a blank block of marble that we can train on. That's how we learn to use a chisel and mallet until we've mastered our craft. Philosophy is all about applying its principles in the real world. Remember we want to be warrior philosophers, goddess philosophers, queen philosophers, putting into practice what we learn. That's what this part of the meditation is all about. We are going to be learning certain stoic practices. The first are preparing practices that you can do for yourself. You won't need a life situation to train on and you can simply do them at home. Second, I'm going to teach you the practices for challenging life situations, how to handle yourself in stressful moments. And third are the practices for situations with other people, how to deal with challenging people. Now keep in mind that different approaches work better for some people and worse for others. Treat these practices as suggestions, not as rigid rules. Try the practices and keep on doing what works and leave out what doesn't work. Don't overthink it. Now, before we get into the practices, let's quickly look at a legend and three important details that will help you to get the most out of the practices. Epictetus teaches, what would have become of Hercules, do you think, if there had been no lion, no Idra, no stag or boar, and no savage criminals to rid of the world of? What would have done the absence of such challenges? In other words, what would have become of a legendary Hercules without the struggles? The legendary Hippolyta, queen of the Amazons. Without her struggles, no one would view her as a hero. Obviously, Epictetus says about Hercules, 
he would have just rolled over in bed and gone back to sleep, sat on his couch, snoring his life away in luxury and comfort. He never would have developed into the mighty Hercules. What would have become of any person you admire without any struggles? Your mother, your father, the colleague you rate so highly, the people you most admire, would you have admired them without their struggle? One thing is for sure, they wouldn't be where they are without the challenges they're surely faced in their lives. Difficulties are important. That's what we're here for. God, says the philosopher Seneca, does not make a spoiled pet of a good man. He tests him, hardens him, and fits him for his own service. All the adversities you're facing in your life, there are tests. See them as tests in a great big university. It's a training ground. Life isn't supposed to be easy, say the Greek philosophers. Life is supposed to be challenging to make sure you actually grow. And those things which we all shudder and tremble, says Seneca, are for the good of the persons themselves to whom they come. Imagine shifting your worldview to accept that all challenges are here to make you thrive and flourish, to become who you are meant to be, to develop your full faculties. Life is meant to be hard at times. Chin up, chest up, you'll do fine. Now let's look at three helpful details that'll help you get the most out of the practices that I'm going to teach you. Be mindful. In Greek, the word is prosochi. Stoicism isn't an easy to follow road. There are many principles to keep in mind and live by. And the most important prerequisite is to be aware of what's going on because Stoic philosophy is a lot about how we react to what happens in the world around us. What happens doesn't matter because it's beyond our control. What matters is how we deal with it. Now, in order to deal with what happens effectively and to be mindful of our reactions, we need to be aware of what's going on. Proshohi. We need to be able to step in between stimulus and response. We need to be able to not go on with our impulses, but to take a step back and look at the situation objectively. Stoicism requires us to be able not to react impulsively to what happens to us. It requires us to spot our initial impressions so that we recognize our ability to choose our response. Once we are able to spot our automatic impressions, we can test them and actively choose to go with the impression or not. Remember the three tests of the Algestis method? Ethos, pathos, logos. Reflecting on every thought you have. Is it true? Ethos. Is it kind? Pathos. Is it useful? Logos as taught by Aristotle. Now look, awareness is the first step towards any serious change. 
If you're not aware of what's going wrong in your life, then how do you want or expect to fix it or improve it? If you don't realize when you get angry, how do you want to prevent it in the future? A consciousness of wrongdoing is the first step to salvation, taught Seneca, the Stoic philosopher. He said, you have to catch yourself doing it before you can correct it. It's about being vigilant. Stoicism asks of us to be aware of what we do in every moment. The whole idea of virtue, to express our highest self in every moment, is based on our ability to be present in the moment and know what's going on. How else do we want to choose our best actions? the most ideal strategy. Our voluntary thoughts and actions are by definition the only thing within our control and they only exist in the here and now. We can't choose an action if we're lost in thought, ruminating over the past or envisioning our future. Therefore, we should focus our attention on the present moment, undistracted by the past or future. Then, we can properly confront the challenges we're facing now, trying to accept it as it is and choose a response consistent with our values. Basically, we should be aware of every step we take, as I indicated earlier, we should watch ourselves like a hawk and bring the same attention into the moment as when we're walking barefoot on broken glass. That attentive. Noticing every detail. This focused and continuous self-observation is needed to practice stoicism and I dare say, a mindful life in general. Don't worry if you think you're not a very mindful person already. You're still able to practice most of the pop practices that I will teach you. Plus, many will actually improve your mindfulness. This cultivation of awareness is part of Stoicism the cultivation of prosohi. You'll get better at stepping back from your impulses and you can analyze them and question their accuracy and then decide upon the most intelligent response. This is what it means to be a philosopher this capacity for self-reflection. Recharge your self-discipline. Practicing Stoicism isn't like watching TV. It takes effort. You must actually do something. Most practices require self-discipline if you want to do them. Some are challenging, not particularly fun, and will suck up your willpower. But that's part of the game. And it's similar with other things in life. If you want to get better at darts or tennis, you must practice. If you want to get better at bicycling, you must practice. If you want to get better at billiards, you must practice. So it is with mindfulness, with pro shohi. It's the same with stoicism. It requires effort and discipline, but at the same time it will build up endurance and self-discipline. It will make you stronger, more resilient. Your mind is a muscle. The more you practice, 
the stronger it will become. Yes, it can be demanding at some times, but you will always have to pay the price if you want to improve. Rome wasn't built in a day. The practices will make you more resilient, peaceful, courageous, disciplined, and generally develop all your faculties. Plus, you must keep in mind that there's a cost of not having philosophy as a way of life. Oh yes, there's nothing worse than ignorance. Never believe all that nonsense about ignorance is bliss. Ignorance will bring more pain like a wild animal that just hurts without knowing the reason. You will simply be responding to things that happen around you, reacting, reacting without awareness. No, 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 my dear friend, you are too wise for that. You want to practice self-reflection so that you will be prepared, especially in challenging times. The danger that you will spend your days pursuing valueless things and will therefore waste your life is the greatest danger of all. Without philosophy, your life will just happen to you. You will waste your time on valueless things. It's up to you. Either we're willing to invest and reap the benefits or not and risk simply wasting your life. The possible rewards are much greater than the efforts you have to put into it, that's for sure. The investment is a no-brainer. Philosophy has given me all the benefits in my life. From physical wealth to emotional fulfillment. It's given me everything. Because once you awaken from the trance of the robot mode, your whole life will make sense. And you'll be able to surf through, wasting the least amount of energy, reaping the greatest benefits. Stoics can transform themselves into individuals remarkable for their courage and self-control. They will be able to do things that others dread doing, and they will be able to refrain from doing things that others cannot resist doing. You can become this remarkable individual, or you're willing, if you're willing to put up with some efforts. Do these practices even if you don't feel like doing them. It's what you have to do, at least in the beginning. Don't just read them and nod your head. Go out and practice them. Remember, self-discipline is like a muscle. The more you use it, the stronger it will get. So each time you decide to overcome the initial hurdle and do a practice, you train yourself in self-discipline and willpower. You will do a little every day and your practice will grow and become a way of life, offering you inner freedom. Freedom from obsessive, compulsive, toxicity, negativity, drama, the usual things that most people go through in their quiet desperation. According to Epictetus, you'll get ridiculed if you practice philosophy and tell other people about it. If you desire philosophy, prepare yourself from the beginning to be ridiculed if you show off to it about to other people. So don't get too high on your horse considering yourself superior to others because you're practicing philosophy. Remain modest. 
and simply share by being a living example of a virtuous, powerful being in charge of your life. Remember, Epictetus continues, that if you abide in the same principles as others, you will get the same results as others. If you stick by your practice of philosophy your whole life, then you will gain the admiration of many. So you go on to this golden path of harmony and virtue. And now, shortly, I will begin to introduce to you some of the basic practices. Think about how this message can help you see things differently in your life right now. How it can offer a solution how it can help you to become more courageous in your life. Allow the message to enlighten you, to liberate you. Now move your thoughts to your future. You can see from here that your future looks very bright, full of color, full of love and laughter and adventure. Visualize yourself radiating confidence and well-being in your future. Visualize yourself exchanging positive experiences with others. Visualize yourself going through various creative adventures that allow your potential to flourish. See yourself in the future, how you are far more self-assured certain of yourself. You are able to trust your own judgment and to make decisions that you can commit to. As you go deeper you are aware that you are believing in yourself more and more every day and you are able to express yourself and your emotions freely. As you appreciate yourself it is easier for other people to appreciate you more. You are beginning to like yourself more, to value yourself as an individual. You are now able to express yourself easily, not fearing anyone or anything. You express your emotions with ease and honesty. You're honest with yourself and with others. As you become more honest, as you become more spontaneous and free to be yourself and to freely learn and grow more and more each day, you are enjoying life more and more. Yet you remain humble and in touch with other people's feelings treating them with respect and in return they respect and admire you for being so peaceful, confident, a person of virtue and values. You go deeper into relaxation now. You are aware that you have a strong desire, a powerful motivation to be your most confident self. You will always be confident down deep inside. Nothing or no one can ever take that away from you. You are at ease around people and they respond well to your confidence, 
to your warmth and your honesty. You are an authentic person. You accept that you are becoming more and more confident daily and your mind, body and psyche are all working together in perfect harmony, motivating you to move, think and act and react with tremendous confidence. See yourself initiating new things, new projects, interacting with others. Notice how they are paying attention to you. As you make eye contact when you are speaking with them, they feel your authenticity. See yourself in the future as you move in and out of situations easily your energy level is very positive your actions are positive and confident you have certainty in all that you do it's as if you are being guided by a higher force open to constantly learning new things and approaches you see in your mind that previously challenging situations seem easy to you now. You have the ability to put other people around you at ease and they want to contribute to your project. They want to contribute to your dream. Confidence is part of you. Confidence is part of your psyche now and you express supreme confidence as you face any challenges with deep understanding. Yet you'll notice now that things are just flowing towards you because you are clear about your intentions and you have the highest good at heart. The universe is opening the doors for you. You enjoy dealing with people and altogether you feel accepted by them, respected and admired. People are actually speaking about your purpose now, your projects. The word is spreading rapidly. You're expanding your potential in all directions. All your preparations are paying off now. Money is flowing to you easily because you are honest, authentic, clear and taking massive action. Now all these actions are paying off and this raises your enthusiasm. You are enjoying your life and fulfilling your life purpose at the same time. You are enjoying your life and fulfilling your life purpose at the same time. You are tremendously confident about yourself and your mission. As you go deeper and deeper, you truly believe in yourself. You can repeat your life purpose and mission statement mentally three times here if you like. No matter what happens in your life, this life purpose, your flourishing, will definitely become a reality. And now, on the count of three, you're going to return to full open awareness, returning to your ordinary life. One, take a deep breath, expanding your shoulders, expanding your arms over your head like you do early in the morning stretching yourself. Two, take another deep breath and move your body stretching from side to side. Three, extend to the tips of your toes and the tips of your fingers, stretching your whole body, feeling revitalized you're feeling confident, you're feeling powerful and certain of yourself. And as you're returning to full awareness, simply stretch your neck from side to side, relaxing your shoulders 
and opening your eyes if you've had them closed up until now. You look around and you see that the environment hasn't changed, but deep in yourself you know that you have experienced a deep transformation. The reality may look the same, but you have changed, and that changes everything. That will attract the most positive energy. No matter what happens, you know that you are able to handle things from a place of inner strength and confidence. Thank you for joining me in this guided meditation. I look forward to seeing you next time. Once again, thank you for supporting my work on Patreon.com.